How are you and how's lockdown been treating you? Hello, Darren. Yes, I'm very well. It's good to see you. Lockdown um, kept you in a, in a room. Have, have you been working from home? Uh, have you been out? Uh, we have followed the lockdown to the letter. Uh, I live in a small village and I've learned more about the public footpaths of Dunton near Biggleswade than I ever thought possible. <laughs> have um, they been worn down well? <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, 20 years, we actually passed the anniversary during lockdown of 20 years being in this same house and and the walks that my wife and I have done, we never knew existed. So uh, uh, we've certainly uh, made use of that. But yeah, kept uh, ourselves at home. Um, it's not a life that I'm used to. Uh, I've travelled pretty much on a weekly basis uh, all over the country and indeed around the world. So it's been strange, as it has for everybody involved in darts. Mm. But yeah, managed to keep myself busy, yes. The, uh, you just basically um, said what I was going to ask you. You know, lots of people <laughs> in the in the queue, <laughs> ever the professional, um, <laughs> talk, talking to those that have, you know, in the darts world we do we just try it's just global isn't it it's a massive global movement and it isn't until you're sort of stuck in here or wherever uh, and you think oh blimey we don't have to do some mileage we do this sport's really big you know and where we go and we've just spent the last 11 weeks pretty much in our garden if we've got one or in as you say walking around our locality yeah you're absolutely right and i'm sure a lot of people are doing it um, when you look at your diaries of what you should have been doing at any given week or weekend just this month, I think, I looked at the calendar. I should have been in New York a couple of weeks ago, then Copenhagen. We had Selsey for the England Open. Uh, it would have been Six Nations in Scotland this weekend. It just goes on and on. The European Tour would have been rolling. So all of the flights and all of the plans that we've all made, it, it keeps hitting home every week because a yeah. reminder comes up or a, a flight that's now been cancelled. Things so, on your phone, on your calendar. Yeah. like, ooh, you should be in Cheers. I know. So... Um, Look, we've just tried to use the time. I think everybody involved in darts, whether you're a player or an official, you just try and use the time. And we've been really lucky. Um, there's been so much played online, as I'm sure mm. you've already found, you know, with the virtual stuff you've been doing. Yeah, yeah. We are lucky that we're involved in a sport that we can actually do that. There's not many. I mean, if we were rowers, Darren, it would be difficult to sort of compete online, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, slightly difficult, yeah. <laughs> you met JDC Virtual. There's a guy, um, Carl Boys, a uh, professional pool player, um, who we had a chat with. Um, and again, you know, he, 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 you can't put it, not everyone's lucky enough to have a huge pool table or whether it's, a, a, you know, tennis or whatever. You're right. Um, and it, it's got to have done the sport good, hasn't it? I think so. And I think every player, they'll tell you that the JDC players, you'll have some that really love playing on and others that have just stayed away from it. I think it's the same with the seniors. We've yep. seen so many of these excellent online tournaments. I've been involved with the Remote Darts League, but Modus have been doing a terrific job of the PDC at home tour, yeah, of course. Yeah. And there's been various ones around the world as well that we've seen in, in uh, North America, <clears throat> in Australia now. So many players have embraced it. And I think those players that have done that, played well, they'll actually come out of lockdown competitive sharp mm. i think there are a few of those players that are probably getting more practicing now at home than they would have done otherwise yeah yeah no you're right uh, I, I see it, hopefully that it, it it's picking up people that are you know flicking through their facebook pages or flicking through the internet and they just see dartboards you know but it, more so than ever before and 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 obviously we work with you know you can see the sort of logos behind us and whatever you know yeah. particular manufacturers uh exactly i mean they you know they, they they can't get enough boards out quick enough probably i mean it's just it's it's a good time i think for for us to evaluate that all this that's hanging around now once we flick the switch and we're all out there doing stuff we've got that as well so we've got like an online community now buzzing as well as the the actual tournaments i hope so we're all trying to stay positive during a difficult time yeah. uh for darts we'll we'll keep the positive vibe going I, i'm really hoping as you say that uh, we're more prominent than we were before lockdown. And I think in all areas, I think that that's possible. Let's just hope we can all get back to doing what we love very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Richard, <clears throat> for those that don't know, obviously, you know, you love your darts tournaments, you love the game, you love the 
commentate, you do everything. You do absolutely everything, everything you do. But where did it all start? I mean, were, were you born and given a dartboard straight away? Um, were you, you know, were you the, uh, putting darts into the school when you were six? I mean, where, where, when did it all start? How, how long is this interview? Um, darts has pretty much been in, in my life since I can remember. There was a dartboard in our front room as a child. So there was always darts. My mum's dad, my granddad, Alf, was an, a fantastic player. Mm -hmm. um, so he was doing exhibitions from, he's the first player that I could see hit 180s and, and hit three doubles and three balls. He was amazing. Wow. So I, as soon as I could play, I was playing against him. And, you know, I look at the JDC now and how much darts there is for the youngsters. And, and I think back at how much I would have loved that at that age, because there wasn't the same opportunity. I couldn't even play darts in a pub until I was 13. And, and there was only a few pubs in my area that would allow children to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by the time I started playing pub league, I was a proficient player. At 13, 14, I was a very good player. And, and at that age, as we've seen with so many of our players, the, the fear factor isn't there. Uh, the the, the grown-ups were nervous about playing me because he was this little kid he, and he can play. Um, I, I played youth for Cambridgeshire. So my ambition, Darren, was always to be a player. Right, play okay. darts, play darts, play darts. But what I had right from the off, and my dad helped me with it a lot, but the, my counting was so quick. I could always count fast and I knew all the checkouts. I memorized them and I always watched darts on the TV. And as soon as <clears throat> I was able to record it, you know, I had a VHS library just full of darts, re-watching the same games. Therefore, I was learning about all the players and their preferred method of checkout. Right. So I was kind of training for my job that I had no idea I was doing. I was training to be a referee or to be a spotter without knowing I was doing that. And it, and it was as a youth player that I uh, met Bobby George at an exhibition. And that's where the journey for me really started because mm -hmm. everything I'm telling you now, I was speaking 10 times faster, 10 times more enthusiastic <laughs> about everything that was darts. And he saw... Uh, something in me that I didn't know was there myself. He knew how quick I could count and how much I maybe could add to the game as I as I grew, Darren. <laughs> and he didn't call me Little Richard. He yeah, he didn't call me Little Richard straight away. He called me BBC. He called me Bobby's best counter. <laughs> and and I only met him two or three times across my teens. But um, I sent him lists of checkouts and just stayed in touch. And it wasn't until I'd grown up. Yeah, I was around 22, 23. I went to the lakeside to, the, to watch the darts, ran into Bobby. I was just going to try and get a photograph with him. And he's like, we need your help. He remembered me and, and they had issues with the spotter wow. at that time. So wow. they asked me if I could help out with the spotting. So telling the cameras and the director where the players are going to throw at the lakeside. That was in 2002. So from being a keen young darts player, very quickly, I moved into a role where I was counting. Mm. And just to complete that little journey with Bobby, that I, I did the spot, spotting came about, and he asked me, do you referee? Can you call the numbers? I said, well, I've never done it, but I know I could add them up. And I said, I I'm not shy on the karaoke, so I'll get on the mic. I don't mind. And he said, well, could you maybe help me at some exhibitions where my regular MC can't make it? So I did. So, so very quickly, early 2002, through Bobby George, I was spotting and I was refereeing. Wow, that's incredible. So very much a personal thing there, because some people do play for their county and then they, they score for the county or ref for the county and then they move into the TV or whatever. Yours is very much about an individual, another sharp button in the game, has just spotted you, pardon the pun, yeah. uh, you know, and thought, thought, hey, this guy's, this guy's good. And, and, and by the way, I, by playing, I just must mention, if people are wondering what happened to my glittering playing career, I just wasn't good enough. I, I, never, I never coped well with nerves. I, can, I still play to this day. And the older you know, you're getting well your with front nerves. Room. Stands up in front of thousands and millions of people on TV. But, the... <laughs> but that, that is it. I, I, people always say to me, I never look nervous. I am nervous. Um, as an MC and referee, everyone is, but I managed to control that. I yeah. couldn't as a player. I would look at a 20 and hit a 12 when I was on stage, even for my county. I played county for Cambridgeshire and I was the best player on the practice board, but I wasn't, 
in competition, I wasn't good enough. And that, yeah, that was just a fact yeah. of it. So by the time I was 18 or 19, I'd given up any kind of hope of progressing because I just hit a level that I couldn't, I couldn't progress. Yeah, this is great. I mean, you know, for, for with this, this is going to go on our um, YouTube channel for the JDC and for, for, for the youngsters out there that might be at that tipping point and perhaps just there is a realisation sometimes that you've either got to play and just love it and enjoy it for what it is. But if you're one of these that are very determined and things aren't, you just get, just feel that at some point, dad or brother, whoever you speak, I just, just don't think this is for me. I'm not going to make it. Well, there's, a, there's a, a wealth of opportunities out there for refereeing, spotting, whatever you want to do in the game, you know, if you, if you really want it. I wonder that, Darren, um, if you look at all sports and all officials, I wonder how many of them were keen players that didn't make it. So you end up working elsewhere in your sport. And I'll definitely put myself in that category. But if you speak to the referees, everyone played, everyone you know, yeah. you've got referees yeah. that were county players, but they haven't been good enough. <clears throat> so they obviously you count well as a player, so it helps you with the refereeing. <clears throat> what I had... Um, it wasn't my choice, to be honest. I always wanted to count. I wanted to spot or referee. I started to referee tournaments, and tournament organisers liked how I spoke with the audience. So uh, around 15 years ago, when I was refereeing in countries like Denmark, Sweden, the Netherlands, the organisers were asking me to host. And in the end, I was being hired as an MC mm -hmm. rather than a referee. Uh, and that wasn't, and I'm honest there, that wasn't my choice of career. I, I still, to this day, view myself as a dart statistician or mathematician rather than being a host. Yeah. Yet, yet it seems that I'm now most well known for being a front man. Whereas in my heart of hearts, I want to be at the board calling the scores or with a production team spotting the numbers for the cameras. Yeah, which which a lot of the a lot of the um, people that are new to the game probably don't realise that you know you are at a lot of these tournaments. You're just physically not in front of the camera. You're there in a room or whatever you know with your guys in production, and you spend hours you're making sure that the checkouts are right and the scoring's going, whatever you're doing. I mean, it's it's quite you're there. You're doing a lot, but not necessarily with your bow tie and, and the microphone. And it's a job, Darren, that I could, you know, I know we haven't got that long and it's a job that's been so good to me. We could do mm. a separate show on it because spotting has given me so much opportunity to travel and just to work with some of the most talented people yeah. you could imagine in, in, in television. And, and to this day, I work with some of the most incredible uh, people in production you, you could imagine. And that's from commentary to the directors, to the cameramen, to everyone involved. It's such a, a privilege to do it, working on the sport that I adore. <laughs> so, so, so many times the travel and the opportunities, again, give me the opportunity to then be on stage or to, to referee or to, to, to do the actual darts. And that's through television and production. Couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I count myself very lucky. Is that I've never been a player, but you know, it's been wonderful to just be immerse myself in this world of darts, whether it's from junior level or to the to the top guys. But talking about production and TV, <coughs> oh, brilliant! Um, just spotted the little bully behind you. So we we must talk about this. So. I'm not being funny, but a lot of people may have been watching the last few Saturdays and, you know, play your cards right, whatever. Take your pick. Not really sure about that one. But anyway, the best show of all is coming up. You've been doing Bullseye again. Well, how, how was that? That, unbelievable. I mean, I got a phone call last June. I was in an airport ready to travel away to do some European tour spotting. Out of nowhere, thought it was a joke at first. But there's a <laughs> producer ringing me asking if I could be part of a TV show. That's all they said, a darts TV show. We want you to referee or call the score. So I, when I went for the production meeting and they said, we're redoing Bullseye, I, I, I could have fallen off the chair. I, I so, would have loved to have seen your face. <laughs> I was so thrilled. And, and on a personal note, I, you know, I, I sat pretty much next to Tony Green for some 10, 12 years spotting at Lakeside. Oh, yeah. Uh, and to to have the opportunity to to fill those shoes on that show in a role that he made his own, literally. I mean, no one else has ever done it. Mm -hmm. So just for one show only on the Alan Carr's epic game show, I am the Tony Green on on 
on the episode of Bullseye. So I, I couldn't be happier to do it. He, he always said he'd put me forward. I never quite believed him. Um, <laughs> I, I thank Bobby George for all the opportunities that have come along, but uh, Bullseye came along out of the blue. I, I don't know where it came from or who, who put me forward, but um, I'm it, it, so thrilled to be doing it. For, for my age, obviously, Bullseye was one of the things that, you know, every Sunday I just couldn't wait for it to happen, you know. And then to, to sort of be talking to you, who's now, you know, in 2020, it's still, yeah. it's still got something, hasn't it? It's a, just a great show. Um, and, and chatting to Alan Warren the other week, you know, who's been on it uh, yeah. as a player and a contestant. It's just everybody loves a bit of bully, don't they? They do. And I, and I will warn people now, don't exclusive, exclusive. The... exclusive. Yeah, don't expect it to be the same because, because it's not. It is 2020. They are obviously going to change things. Um, I think a lot of people, we, we all love the nostalgia, so you watch something hoping it's going to be identical. Well, it, yeah. it isn't. It isn't. But it was great fun. Alan Carr was just terrific to, to work with. I'm so happy to have done that as well. It mm. was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. And I really hope that the darts fraternity just get behind it and back it for what it is, which was great fun and pays homage to what was an iconic TV show. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they will. I mean, there was something uh, you, there was something on the internet. There was like a load of people playing trumpets doing it all around, doing some kind of <laughs> theme tune. I was like, this is well cool. That's the best bit of social media I think I've seen in lockdown. But yeah, a, a Zoom call with everyone, an orchestra playing the theme tune to Bullseye. Yeah. What a better piece of music. I can't think of one. Just shows the reach and how popular it is, I guess. It, um, absolutely. But so, so how long does it take to do that? I mean, you're doing a, a show. It's a one-off. Was it a day? Do you have to do a couple of days, or, or uh, is it quite, quite slick? Or did you have to, you know? Because I'm guessing the people that are doing the production can only go off what they've seen. Because I guess the same director didn't do it 30 years ago, did he? So uh, that's right. Yeah, it was um, Talkback Productions that made it. You know, they make shows like QI now and things like that. So. <clears throat> They obviously know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, but, but the bullseye element, you're absolutely right. And uh, we had the original creators there. We had right. um, we were at various rehearsals in London, just in the theatre room, um, before we did the show. And a lot of it was just to see if it worked and see what passed and, and, and throwing a few ideas around, as well as rehearsing the show. Yeah. So Alan would get used to it. I was getting used to it. So by the time we went to Manchester to record the show, Yes, we run through it. It was a couple of days we were there just to make that one hour show. Um, but it felt very natural once we actually did the, the main show. What you're going to see on the output pretty much ran as, as was. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. brilliant. I can't, yeah, it's I can't, excellent. I loved it. I can't wait. I can tell. Yeah, I can't wait. I love it. Love and, it. I, and I've kept quiet about it, Darren, for so long. We filmed this in July 2019. That's correct. Yes. So it's almost a year that it's been out there I remember and, and, you were going to come and see us uh, at the JDC I think for something for the kids I and, was and you had you had to you said I can't tell you but <laughs> yes <laughs> I remember absolutely that absolutely right yeah so at least now finally I have the evidence that I wasn't telling fibs to you Darren no, no not at all no I'll back you up 100% there that's right um, yes so um, darts aside then um, you know Appreciate you giving us some time today, but what other things have you been doing? You, have you been practicing cookery or have you been to, some people have been into gardening, although the weather's not like that now, but um, any pastime you've picked up thought, oh, I've never tried this before? No, aside of the walking, I, I, I must admit, my time is still very busy with darts because I'm working um, with the World Darts Federation now. Yes. And there's been so much uh, work going on behind the scenes to try and uh, get things moving for the future. So I'm still working day to day on that yeah. um it, it it's something i think a lot of people have done during lockdown darren it is puzzles jigsaw puzzles yeah the my wife and i at the dining room table <laughs> <laughs> night I, after night yeah well um uh, what's his name um hinks is quite famous for his puzzle isn't he he, he is he, he, spiders he, yeah, he just massive. My fellow JDC ambassador has Indeed. inspired us to the jigsaw puzzles. But the darts, look, I, I, I'm going back to darts, but I've had such a great time. I must mention, um, there's a group of lads that I spend a lot of time with, usually away at darts tournaments, and, and we're all fun players. We're all around the same level. Um, 
we go to the Welsh Open every year and play tournaments in our own chalets. So yeah, we've, yeah. We've that, our own kind of chalet organisation. That Mr Wheeler and Co, people like that. Absolutely. So yeah. we have a couple in Ireland. Um, I won't name that. I'd love to. Hugh Ware's part of it. Um, yes, Hugh. Yeah. I'd love to name a couple of the markers in the, in the PDC. Mark Walker, Tris Vernon. Um, the, I've got a name all now. <laughs> no, but... Um, if I mention the Oyston brothers, I may get a drink out of that <laughs> once we're off of lockdown, though I doubt it. Anyway, anyway, uh, they're, they're, they've become, they were great friends before, uh, through lockdown, they've become family because mm. playing darts online and just having our own tournaments, I tell you, has helped a lot of us through, in all seriousness, what have been some quite dark times at side for, for any of us. There are 12 of us in a group and people have their highs and lows, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So the playing darts online, which I'm sure so many people watching and listening can relate to because it's such a great thing to do. It keeps you in touch with your friends, help, keeps you social, keeps you active. So it's been terrific. Good, good. So uh, we'll end on a positive, Richard. Thank yeah. you. Um, it, it's been wonderful to see you because um, we're not getting to see people, but we are coming out as we, we talk now we're, we're lockdown is starting to sort of loosen. Um, yeah. and, and it's just going to be great when we can all get back together, but I still believe that we'll have a community online as well, which would be great. So um, we look forward to catching up with you soon, mate. And, um, and good luck with all these new projects. I hope the show is well received and whenever it's broadcast very soon, I'm sure. Uh, and all the work you're doing for the sport, because you are, you know, Mr. Darts, aren't you? Mr. Statistician. I, I'm, uh, someone called me the Swiss army knife of darts. And I'm not sure if that was because of my multitasking or just because I can fit in the pocket. I'm not sure. Who cares? It's a compliment. <laughs> uh, Richard, take care. All the best to you and your family. Take care. Thank you, Darren. Thanks to everyone at the JDC. Brilliant.